some sports. It's in the game. Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what ought to be a great matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. With that, we'll get out to Matt Nagy's home opener as coach of the Bears as we get to Soldier Field with Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First opened way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. The children will grow, and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. This fielded at the 2. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Throwing now, Osweiler on first down. And incomplete to open things up. He kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. Again on second and ten now, it's Osweiler. And this one caught by Des Bryant. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And that catch, he just hit number 800 in his NFL career. And just think, that puts you in top 35 range all time in the NFL. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. This offensive line has struggled. In fact, when we sat down with the coach, he said, it's been in tatters lately. They allowed six sacks in their last game. Just gave up another one right there. In tatters, so it sounds a little bit like this right now. Exactly. It's like that paper being ripped. And right now, they've got to find a way to get it back together. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the Bears take over. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. 
Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that one falls incomplete. A 50-50 ball. A little dangerous. Could have been picked. Now it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. And Robinson with a big catch. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. He got 29 yards that time. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Back to throw. Buckley. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. They were able to win last week despite him being sacked four times. They might need to tighten the reins a little bit or this one may not end in another victory. You're right about that. They can't count on just winning the game no matter what happens. They can't let the accumulation of hits and harassment in the pocket get to their quarterback. Got to stop that, give him clean lanes to throw the football in order to have a better chance to win again this week. It's caught at the 10. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety, so you know. And I, and you saw. You gonna see me in your nightmare, son. You gonna put it. From the gun. Buckley, and he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Allen Robinson, his first touchdown of the new season, and they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that makes the score 7-0. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness go, those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. From the shotgun, Osweiler. Play with a catch right side. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A good-looking drive for the Packers so far. It's a first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Well, look now at our starting defense. Currently number one in the NFL against the run. And that's a ranking that feels good, right? To be number one and be the top of your profession. But here's the problem. 
It's only week one. One week, yeah. Can they do it 15 <laughs> more times? <laughs> if so, then we really got something to talk about. That's the challenge. I can't believe they even let you play. Pass caught left side by Humphreys. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to make it third down and 10. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. That's sack by Khalil Mack. That's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, adds a second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. On now is the Packers punter, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big-time races. Means they get out to a fast start. They're setting Packer pressure, and down he goes. Chandler Jones, one of the best athletes to ever come out of Rochester, New York, in for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Right to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Second and long. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Allen Ryan. Receiver. Let's go. Stick the oil. You draw Porter. Come to my world. Get it. Throwing on third and long. Buckley. Open man is Trey Burton. And this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down right near the 24. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? On second down, here's Henry. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Osweiler now, the throw on third down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Woods. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers. Now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. The numbers on the ground for Henry last week. 18 carries, 68 yards. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. And partner, I thought it was a lot of fun for us to be able to sit in on their film session with the offensive line. We saw how they blocked it up last week. It's a pretty good success. And we see what their game plan is for this week. They expect that defensive front to be someone they can move. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Packer first down. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. 
From the gun, it's Osweiler. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Kevin King with a pick, and he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield strike. <laughs> Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Going up top. That's caught inside the 20. It's a gain of 35. How about this first quarter for them throwing the football? This defense has zero answers for what they've seen so far with the ball in the air. I'm not sure how they're going to change things around, but offensively, I keep attacking. I keep throwing the football until they make me change. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And he's got his man. That's Robinson. Touchdown, Bears. Allen Robinson with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. As the Bears push further out in front. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and it's now 14 to nothing. So that drive, four plays, and the end result is a Bears touchdown. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does. And, and he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Khalil Mack picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to get a screen soon. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Woods, and that takes us from second to third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Khalil Mack able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Charles, not to point fingers, but how much of this goes on the shoulders of the offensive line? Well, look at the six sacks last week. That's the fourth in this game. Definitely the bulk of it does go on the offensive line. That's what they're tasked with doing, keeping their quarterback upright and clean in the pocket. But I think they have to look at, okay, are we bringing in extra? So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off play action. Buckley. Completion left side to Miller. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Second and one. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Operating from the gun, Buckley. He's got his tight end, Burton. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. A bit of a catch for him to remember. That's number 400 for his NFL career. Not a bad number at all. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. Now a man open down the middle of the field, and they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw again. Buckley. And Miller will pull this one in. He's got it for the Bears. Touchdown. Anthony Miller. 
Sanders on for the extra point. It's good, and before you know it, it's 21-0. A drive that time of six plays, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not, and last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. The pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Well, they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. From the gun on third down, Osweiler. He completes it to Bryant. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. The strong running. <laughs> and he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people were worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 41. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Now we're going to get a stoppage. Appears to be an injured bear on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. Come on, set. 15, one. 15, one. Check three, check three. On second down now, it's Henry. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. On third down, Osweiler. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. 70, Indy. On first and 10, it's Osweiler. And he slings one that's incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And it's second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 29 to throw is Osweiler. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And down inside the 15 he goes. Let's go, let's go. 16 yards of first down. First 
This will probably be the last play of the quarter. I'm going to come back to you. On first down, Noble. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 21-0 our score after one. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll go option to the short side. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Brock Osweiler, his fourth touchdown on the year. As they are now on the board here in the first half. That seemed like a much-needed touchdown after 21 unanswered points to start the game. It's not often that you equate a football game to a golf tournament, but it's like you don't want to shoot yourself out of the tournament too early. So they needed that touchdown to make sure that they got an opportunity to not just get back into this game, but a chance to win it later if they continue to play well. Point after, right down the middle. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. And how about the start so far, Charles? Three first-half touchdown passes. And that's how you generate excitement on a team, keep your offense moving at a really high level, and it's also how you establish leadership by playing that well. Three touchdown passes, that's the way to lead. Now he's just hoping for number four. It's the pro bowler Chandler Jones who makes the tackle. Here's second and eight. This one out left to the tight end, Burton. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. On third down, Buckley. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? It's going to touch down their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, nine on the return. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. And it's time now for a player spotlight, and we key in on Brock Osweiler. And he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they're doing something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much. Not if you intend to win. And I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Third and long. It's Osweiler. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear set. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, finding his way into the backfield. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. now is the Packers punter as the drive goes backwards so he's on to punt it away his first punt 48 yards this one looks equally as good 
A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. We're in the second quarter. He already has two touchdowns. We know how good he is. That's well documented. How do you contain him? We know he's a nightmare. So in this situation, I would go ahead and double him. Maybe even have a third person in the area and try and dissuade them from throwing him the football. Make someone else beat me for a while because I don't know that their talents are his because when he gets his hands on the ball, he breaks down my entire D. Someone else, they may not make the same type of a play. Well, we know his talents are very good. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. On the right side, this is Miller. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Throwing on third and long. Buckley connecting with Burton here over the middle. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try to mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. Derrick Henry. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Second down, it's Henry. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Osweiler. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Osweiler now 12 of 17 through the air as he leads his guys up on first down. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. On second and one, Osweiler. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. They'll run on first down. Noble. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Looking to throw on second down. Osweiler, right side complete. That's Woods. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. This taken in by Jakeem Grant. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for them, too. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Osweiler. Now the ball's out. Osweiler lost it. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. It's second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. Henry out of the pistol. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and they're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Here's Osweiler. And he's wrapped up. Taken down, back at the 25. Akeem Hicks at 6'5", 332, finds his way home for the sack. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. So now the Packers turn things over to the special teams crew. They're on for the field goal try. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one is right through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> Their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can... Now the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Damon Harrison bringing in 341 pounds of power for the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. 
you have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. What we got? What we got? What we got? Now. Looking to throw. Buckley. And his pass incomplete. The linebacker, Demario Davis, got a hand in to break that one up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Emmanuel Agba in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Two sacks last week, another one right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes, and he's capitalizing. And a few times he's even defeated double teams. He doesn't care at this point. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been terrific so far. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Packer drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and ten. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Now they couldn't get anything going there out of the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it, it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? Well, we're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darnell Savage. So the first interception of his career under center, and you knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It has to. And I know he feels like the world is just tumbling down at this moment, but there's got to be some veteran somewhere, some mentor that's going to tell him, hang in there, my man. Plenty more to come. Keep firing. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. On second and nine, Osweiler throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Woods will say he should have had it, and it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Bearing it out deep for Woods. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears' D. 
Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He does have the one interception, Charles, but I think that's been more than offset by the three first-half touchdown passes. I would agree with you. There is a blemish, but when you've thrown three touchdown passes to try and erase it, that's a little bit better than the ratio that all NFL coaches are seeking from their quarterbacks, and he's giving it to them. They'll take the three to one every single time. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in his second week of the regular season. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time, and it's third and short. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And, I'm not and the ball is knocked out, and the Packers pick it up. Some guys just have a knack for creating turnovers. He's got a little bit of that going. He forced a fumble last week, another one there. And it just drives teams crazy because they realize that certain guys, as you said, have that knack, and they're trying to keep them away from the action, away from the ball. But the best ones have that overwhelming desire, that overwhelming need to get to the football and make it happen, and that he does. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. And now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. The completion good for three and it's second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Osweiler toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. In their mind, certainly a field goal try would be a letdown. They have the great starting field position. Now facing third down. Now it's Osweiler. And he is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he could scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This from 25 yards out. And his kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So, yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. So we've come to halftime in a five-point game. 
As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll get started up at Lucas Oil Stadium in the capital city of Indianapolis. And it's the Browns who have the lead late in the first half. Baker Mayfield has thrown a touchdown pass. From there, we'll head to Cincinnati to check on the Bengals at home at Paul Brown Stadium. And this one going the visitor's way as the Texans have the lead in that one. Deshaun Watson has thrown a touchdown pass. Finally, let's get to Philadelphia. Check on the Eagles at home at Lincoln Financial Field. And they trail in that one as it's the visiting 49ers who are out in front. Two touchdown passes there for Jimmy Garoppolo. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentator, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Bears' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 14 yards into Chicago first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft and Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. On first down, Buckley. This is Gabriel out on the left side. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Second and two. This throw caught at about the five. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Three red zone trips, three touchdowns so far. They'll look for a fourth on second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football, and the Packers pick it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. All I know, partners, that with every play call that came in, there was a little discussion about, hey, we can seal this bad boy. We can really put ourselves in a great spot to take total control, and yet they find a way to cough it up. Yeah, the two-score game opportunity eludes them, and now a chance for the other side to come back here. Yeah, that means defense has to go out there and make some plays themselves. So we call sudden change. Let's see if the defense is mentally ready to take care of it. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Romeo Okwara in on the tackle. Again, it's Henry. 
And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Thanks to that last play, a little more room to operate. First and 10 at the 18. Throwing, Osweiler. And we got a man over the middle, it's Woods. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. And that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver a downfield for a nice completion. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now it's Henry. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 35 on second down, Osweiler. That's caught left side. It's Higby, the tight end. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Throwing now, Osweiler on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there. It's second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Get it. Play with a catch right side. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there. Kind of played into their hands. So out comes the field goal team once more. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. It can be a thankless job sometimes to be a kicker, but they're thanking him right now. That's now four field goals. He's kept him in the game. He sure has. That offense has got to find its rhythm because I'm not sure that just kicking field goals is going to allow them to win this game. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field and to come away with nothing that's difficult for a team to handle that difficult and that, and oh my goodness he loses it again wow that ball gets knocked free but a teammate comes along and scoops it up almost like it's almost like baseball Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. From the gun, Buckley. He's got his tight end, Burton. 
And they work this well upfield across the 45. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Operating from the gun. Buckley. Open man Taylor Gabriel. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 right at the 40. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized. Executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So first and second down went the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. From the gun, Buckley, and that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, that's a perfect example of how he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's game. He is just all around the football right now, isn't he? That he is, and it's funny because I talked with the coaching staff about drills that they do in practice, and one of them is called matching hands. And as soon as that hand is launched by the quarterback, you throw up the opposite hand and match that hand with the QB, and oftentimes you're able to knock it away as we just saw there. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side, maybe a little gas, right? yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting up field and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Call it a pickup of seven, and it's a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. On second and nine, Osweiler, it's caught by Bryant. 11 yards there, first down. Osweiler now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. This is Henry, trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Oh, 
Throwing on second down. Osweiler got his man complete over the middle. It's Bryant. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 41-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 41. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Push him back. Push him back. They'll run it now out of the gun. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there and a first down. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Here we go. Set. 30 base. Now Osweiler on first down. Over the middle complete. It's Woods. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. And Barton, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion. But he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? So many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. And his kick is indeed good. And with that, they move ahead by a point here in this third quarter. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your quarter? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is going to be Packer football. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually, something else happens as well. And this time, it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. Since emerging from the locker room at intermission, he's looked pretty sharp, hasn't he? He's running in this third quarter ready, ready. like he got the orange slices at the half. Oh, yeah. Uh, you remember when he we got kids? the orange slices, not the carrot stick. Oh, boy. There, there was always that mom, wasn't there? Was there was always that mom. Wasn't yours, wasn't mine. All right, they brought the carrot sticks. But this guy, orange slices, have been reading the surface tab and watching the defenses, and he's made some nice adjustments. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. Now the ball's out. Osweiler lost it, but fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Well, that was a big oops right there, but how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession.
a chance of wasting this great starting field position. A real threat. This is third and long. From the shotgun, Osweiler. This will be caught at about the six. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. So now the Packers turn things over to the special teams crew. They're on for the field goal try. Back now at Soldier Field. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. And his kick here is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. Well, it's hard to put your finger on whether this is something to celebrate or something maybe the offense is embarrassed by, but that's now six field goals he's made in this game alone. Yeah, he's bailed him out quite a bit so far, but it's very comforting to know that you have a kicker that's got your back. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive? A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think Coach will be. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Allen Robinson, 71 yards. And the Bears have retaken the lead. So whatever happened to rookie quarterbacks taking time to adjust to life in the NFL because this guy looks like he's been doing it for about, what, seven years? Four touchdown passes? That's not something rookies are supposed to be doing with the ease in which he's doing it. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass, and that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And it's time now for a player spotlight, and we key in on Brock Osweiler. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle of the offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins, we talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. Well, guess what? The same thing happens when you're trying to pass and protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. As they have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. A throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. To throw again on second down. Osweiler got his man complete over the middle. It's Bryant. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They'll throw on first down with Osweiler. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Here now is second and 10, again for the 41. Now Osweiler. And this is going to be caught. 
He won the fight for the football. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 41. Now Osweiler. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Here's Osweiler to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now it's Osweiler. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Jakeem Grant, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Packers have retaken the lead. So from three scores down, these guys have fought all the way back to grab the lead. And I'll just tell people what happened when they went up three scores. I wrote on your paper two words, game over, and now I'm eating those words. I, I was wrong. <laughs> little salt, little pepper yeah, goes hey, down pretty easily. I will admit when I make a mistake. Well, it looked like it was going that way. This is one of those paging Frank Reich moments, and I can't believe I just brought that up because Frank Reich at Maryland in college did it to my Tennessee Volunteers, oh. and I was a big reason why my team lost. Sounds like he still harbors some pain from that game. You know, we still got a little time to work it out with the doctor. <laughs> the kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. When you're facing a deficit on the scoreboard, you're just looking for something to get you right back into the game, and that's the spark that they were looking for. They got it with that big return. Now, Allen Robinson and company gearing up to go again on offense. Now, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now, they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him? Bring him over to our team so Switch we don't have to cover him anymore. Because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know that mid-game trade is going to happen, but good thought. Back to throw now on second and ten. Adrian Amos, the safety, able to make the play. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Operating from the gun. Buckley. And that is incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here's Riley Dixon now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And now trotting back out with the rest of his offensive mates, the big tight end. And this is how the game has trended for him numbers-wise. He's really picked it up. And I, I got to be honest, I don't know schematically. This is where I need you. What does the defense need to do to get back to that start that they had on him? You've got to harass him early in his route. Right off the line of scrimmage, someone needs to be there. So it's not what we call a free release, where he just gets into the route so easily. Because once he builds up momentum and speed, forget it, you're done. Knock him off of that, chip away at his timing, and then make sure you have a second person there in the vicinity as well. Too big and too strong, usually, for one person to handle. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. 
do you throw the ball here in a long distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And this is picked up by the Bears. And he will score. Touchdown, Chicago. So a big turn of events there. This defense makes the play. They return it for the score, and now they have the lead. So much for ball security for the offense. Playing with the lead in the second half. They give the ball up, and all of a sudden they're behind. Big time fumble. Important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it. And this is indeed up to a three-point lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the Packers get set to go. And that last possession, really a gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive, and suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. You've just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And avoids the contact by sliding. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They tried to the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Spotted at the left, hash this from 45. And this one is right down the middle. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's Brock Osweiler and the Texan offense getting set to go. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I mean, we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. 
fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. A good-looking drive for the Packers so far. It's a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, it's Osweiler. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Osweiler will throw again. That's caught left side by Jake Bunt. And down right around the 32-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they left little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. On now is the Packers punter as he's on here to punt it away. Now Allen Robinson and company gearing up to go again on offense. So far he has the trio of touchdowns. Obviously it's been a pretty good game for him. So if this were hockey, they'd be throwing their hats out on the ice for the hat trick, right? I'm not sure exactly what you do in the NFL except applaud and continue to hope you see a little bit more of this. What a tremendous game. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. So you're down by six, hoping your defense would make a big play. I think this qualifies as a big play made. Without a doubt, and when you first see the ball free, your first instinct is to just fall on it. But he obviously wanted way more than that, and that's exactly what he got, taking it all the way for six. And now they can lead it with the point after. Point after try, forthcoming. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. This one taken from the seven. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it. And that's what you don't want to do. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Now a handoff here to his running back. 
And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Chicago. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now the first play of the drive. Complete. Stoner, 70, Indy. Second and ten now, Oswalder. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Throwing on first down. Buckling. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl? And he's got his man. That's Robinson. Touchdown, Bears. Allen Robinson there to make the grab as his guys are able to regain the lead. They'll try to run it here. Brandon, remind me again, this is a rookie quarterback we're seeing? A rookie indeed. I mean, because my eyes are telling me something I'm having trouble believing. Five touchdown passes. He's thrown five in this game. Are you kidding me? Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll lead here to a third down. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. Uses the stiff arm. And got a man, it's Woods. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Osweiler. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Now this one complete on the slant route. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time nine yards, and the sticks move again. Throwing now, 
Osweiler on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To throw again is Osweiler. That is caught inside the five. Well, he flew past 200, 300, and 400 yards. Now he's over 450 yards passing on the day. So what you're saying is oxygen for everyone catching the ball and trying to defend? Yeah, especially those guys trying to defend right now. No doubt. I mean, they've got to be a confused group because they haven't been able to defend him very well at all. And I think he just wants to keep firing. When you have that kind of a day, you're just locked in. Just keep calling those pass plays. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Now. Again, Osweiler. Believe, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Eddie Goldman with a sack. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Touchdown, Packers. Adam Humphreys. His first touchdown here. Of the Extra point attempt here still to come. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, but he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard game there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Ready? Off the bootleg. Buckley. Packer pressure, and down he goes. They can't stop us. They cannot pull us down. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the gun, Buckley. And Robinson with a big catch. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. And these numbers on our monitor are getting hard to believe. He's closing in now right on the doorstep of 500 yards passing. I'm glad that you watched the monitor and said it first because I had trouble absorbing that. That's big time right there, right? That means everything just about has gone right for them and his squad in this game. Let's see if they can keep it up. Off the play fake. Buckley. This is Gabriel out on the left side. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Then he'll give it here to his running back. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Back to throw. 
Buckley, he finds Robinson. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two yards. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Demario Davis getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Partner, you absolutely cannot take a sack in that situation. Now, it's also fourth down. So a big one coming now for Jason Sanders. This to take the lead here in the final minute. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short and a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dial. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield. And it's a fumble. And the Packers pick it up. They find some open field here. And a costly, costly mistake. Coaches talk so much about ball security and in overtime so paramount. Partner, do you ever wonder if maybe they talk about it too much? Too much, yeah. Doesn't seem like you can, but maybe by discussing it time and time again, and you know they overemphasized it here, it almost became self-fulfilling. And any points beat them here. Field goal or a touchdown now. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They've got some decisions to make now. In field goal range already. How do you play this out? You check with your kicker to make sure the spot that he told you that he wants it is still the same as the game has gone on because sometimes the kickers have to make adjustments. They may all of a sudden become more confident about... And he is in for the score! And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just huh? want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So for Green Bay, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Chicago, they will fall to one and one. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.